Good morning, children. In today's class, we will be performing an experiment with the help of a simple pendulum. You can see here that I have made a setup. This is a stand. I have hung a, a bob, a metal bob, from a support. Okay. This is a simple pendulum. When I push the simple pendulum, it will show a to and fro motion, right? Now, what am I going to prove through this experiment? I will prove the variation of time period with the length of the pendulum. Now, how to start children? What is the apparatus which I need? I need a stand. I need uh, the pendulum which from which I will hang from the rigid support. I need a stopwatch, okay, uh, a stop clock and the meter rule. First of all, I will hang the simple pendulum from the rigid support children and I will measure the length of the pendulum starting from the point of suspension to the center of the ball. Okay, so I have measured the length of this pendulum. It is 63 centimeters. 63 centimeters is the length of this pendulum. Okay, now next. Once I have measured the length, I will find out, I will find out the time taken by this pendulum to oscillate in 10, 10 oscillations. Okay, now I will use the stop clock here. I will give this pendulum a push. Okay, now when I give this pendulum a push, it will show a to and fro motion. I have to count the number or I have to measure the time for 10 oscillations. Okay, I start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Stop. Now, in my uh, stopwatch, the, it is showing 17 seconds. Okay. So, the time taken for 10 oscillations is 17 seconds. What about time period? I will divide it by 10 because 10 oscillations is taking 17 seconds. So, therefore, 1 oscillation, time period is time taken to complete 1 oscillation will be 1.7 seconds. Right. Now, what will I do now? This is my first reading. I will slightly decrease the length. Okay. I will slightly decrease the length now. Here. I have decreased the length. Now I will again measure the length of this pendulum with the help of the meter rule. And it is showing 59 centimeters. Okay. So you can see children. Now the effective length is 59 centimeters. Okay. Again. I am going to measure the time taken to complete 10 oscillations. Right? So, I use this watch, stopwatch. I start. One minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Now, let me see. You can see children, the reading is now again going to be around 16 seconds. So now it is 16 seconds and it will be 1.6 as the time period. So what are you seeing? Now let me reduce the third reading. Let me reduce the length of this pendulum. I will make it slightly more or less now. Okay, every time I am reducing the length. Now I measure the effective length again with the help from the point of suspension to the center of the ball. It is showing 40, uh, one second. Yes, the reading is uh, 53. Okay, 53 centimeters. Now the reading is 53 centimeters. And I will measure the time taken to complete 10 oscillations again. I start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Okay, so it's coming to around 15 seconds. It is coming to 15 seconds. So children, what are you observing? That is 1.5 is the time period. What are you observing from here? What? Uh, what is your observation in this particular experiment? You can take more readings also if you want. But the observation is as the length goes on decreasing, the time taken for 10 oscillations.
oscillation goes on decreasing and there the time period also decreases. So when I plot a graph between t square and l that is the time period and the length we know that time period is directly proportional to the length, effective length. Okay, this is one of the factors. So it means that when the effective length will go on decreasing, the time period of the pendulum will also decrease. This is what I want to prove through this particular experiment. That is a simple pendulum experiment. That is the time period and length are directly proportional and therefore the graph between t square and l is a straight line. And from this graph, I can also calculate the slope. Okay, I can take any two points on the graph Okay, you can see this is T1 the whole square, let it be T2 the whole square, this is L1 and L2. From this particular graph, I can calculate the slope of the graph. Okay, thank you children.